There's a lot to know about birds, from their way of life to the various types. A lot like Pokemon, there are so many different types. Some are big, some are small, some can fly, some can't. And some, they're really interesting and different than anything you've seen. Here are some of the most distinctive birds in the world. Number 5. Kakapo The Kakapo is a critically endangered flightless parrot, native to New Zealand. They are chunky fellows, real hefty boys, wobbly clumps. Kakapo are the heaviest of any parrot species. They weigh upwards of 9 pounds at maturity. Despite this, these birds are incredibly adept climbers. They hold their wings out to help them balance just like we might hold our arms out when walking the tightrope as they jump from branch to branch. What adorable and fluffy little gymists, and with the chubby to boot, they're almost like the bird kingdom's very own Roscoe Arbuckle. The kakapo lives a mostly nocturnal life sniffing out food with its well-adapted olfactory senses, but suffering from poor eyesight. Maybe that's why they get so squishy, because they can't see how much they've eaten. The species was driven to the brink primarily by rats and dogs brought in by human settlers. Successful conservation programs have brought the number of individuals from 51 in 1995 to 149 today. I would call that a success, and hopefully it's a number that keeps climbing. It's the only parrot in the world that mates by lacking. Males line up to put on a mating display in mass, and the females pick their favorites, kind of like a chubby parrot version of the baccalaureate. I think, I don't know for sure, I'd never watched it. Unfortunately, these lovebirds only breed an average of three times a decade when the fruit of the Remo tree is abundant making it one of the most endangered birds. But as we've said, the numbers are doing better as of late, even if like pandas, they just won't mate enough. Number 4. Flightless Cormorant The Galapagos Islands are an archipelago volcanic islands distributed on either side of the equator in the Pacific Ocean, surrounding the center of the Western Hemisphere. 96 kilometers, 563 miles west of continental Ecuador, the islands are known for their large number of endemic species and were studied by Charles Darwin during the second voyage of HMS Beagle. They also served as the inspiration for Kurt Vonnegut's awesome book Galapagos. Seriously, read it. Read all his stuff. But I'm rambling on about the Galapagos Islands because they are also home to one of the most unique birds in the entire animal kingdom, the flightless cormorant. The Galapagos Islands are actually the only place on the entire planet you will find the flightless cormorant. As you can probably imagine this makes the bird extraordinarily rare. There are only about 1,000 left in the world. The flightless cormorants are an odd bird, hence appearing in this video. It has black and brown feathers, brilliant turquoise eyes, and most oddly of all, a low growling voice. Their stubby wings are about one-third the size they need to fly, hence why they are the flightless cormorant and not the incredibly great at flying cormorant. But while they might be as good at flying as you or me, it's in the water where they truly excel. In the water, they could give any sea lion a run for its money. They use their cute webbed feet and almost dangerously powerful legs to dive right down to the very bottom of the ocean in a desperate search of fish, eels, octopus, and other small prey. They can be vicious when they want to be, exploring the ocean's depths in the hunt for dinner. But there's something even more curious about the flightless cormorant. These cormorant evolved in an island habitat that was free of predator having no enemies taking its food, primarily through diving along the food, rich shorelines, and not needing to travel to breeding grounds. This is the reason why they evolved to be incapable of flight with no predators to fly away from they had no need. However, since their discovery by man, the islands have not remained free of predators, cats, dogs, and pigs have been introduced to the islands over the years. Number 3. Shoe Bill Stork, sometimes known as the Whalehead and never known as Captain Fluke Duke. The shoe bill stork is a strange bird known and named for the shoe-like shape of its humongous bill. The shoe bill stork has one of the most distinctive beaks in the bird kingdom, looking a bit like a wooden clog, but the huge size of its beak is not merely aesthetic. It serves an incredible purpose. The size of this thing enables the shoe bill stork to catch and eat surprisingly large prey. The bill is also incredibly hard, which when combined with the stork extraordinary jaw muscles, make this innocent looking bird capable of eating animals you don't really think it should be able to. Kind of like when you meet a skinny person who eats loads and you're like, what? The shoebill stork easily captures and dismembers its prey. Luckily for you that doesn't include humans. It feasts primarily on fish with occasional amphibians, reptiles, and even smaller birds. Sometimes it will even dabble in cannibalism, killing and eating other birds. They're found in East Africa primarily in large tropical swamps, Sudan, South Zambia, 
While it may not be all that common to see one in the wild, once you do, you'll get a pretty decent view and why. Because they tend to stand silent and motionless for long periods of time, they just stand there, stationary, inviting you to lean back and take in their beauty, a bit like the bird equivalent of those human statues, they just stand there, hoping that that's enough to impress you and given they have a height of 43 to 55 inches and a wingspan of up to 8 feet 6 inches, you can be sure that if one of these things is in the area, you 100% will not miss it. Can you imagine if you saw one of these giant birds just standing around doping at you? Now, that's an actual big bird. Now it's time for the rare topic. When we proudly announced, we wanted to make a video about unique birds. You lovely subscribers were quick to send us many of your own photos and video clips. You wanted us to discuss. When one of you sent us this image, we have to admit, we didn't believe it. No bird is that big. But then something strange happened. A second person sent us this photo then a third, then a fourth, then a fifth before we knew it. 69 subscribers had sent us this image, so we have to wonder if this photo is fake. Why did almost 70 people send it to us convinced it was real? And if it is real, where is this bird now? Is it still out there? Comment down below with the hashtag Raratopic, and we might pin the comment that best explains what is being shown in this image. Let's move on to the next one. Number 2. Long Waddled Umbrella Bird You've had to wait all the way to number 2 for this one. It's the Long Weighted Umbrella Bird, and yes, seriously, that's its name, mainly found in the humid forests of both Ecuador and Colombia. The Long Weighted Umbrella Bird has, as surprising as this may sound features even more bizarre than its name. I didn't think that would be possible, and yet here we are. Just look at the overwhelmingly magnificent crest on the males. It looks like something the hair musicians of the 70s would adorn themselves with in Elvis-style quiff. This is a bird who seriously wants to be noticed with its hair like feathers stretching out across their bill. And that's only the beginning of the long-weighted umbrella bird's visual decadence. The wattle is even more peculiar than their crest or bill. It is black and long, hanging down about 16 inches from the middle of their chest. It is what fashion designers might call a bold look. They can even inflate said waddle during courtship rituals to draw attention. Perhaps, even more incredibly, they can retract it against their chest during an epic fight. Number 1. Sri Lanka Frogmouth And we end with this strange fella. A fella so strange that it has a mouth less like a bird and more like a frog. That's why rather fittingly it's called the Sri Lanka Frogmouth. It's also been known to be called the Sri Lankan Frogmouth and the Salin Frogmouth. It's never been called the Grumble Crumple Spirit. This strange frog-faced feathery friend is a small little bird found in the western ghats of South India and Sri Lanka. Related to the night jaws, it is nocturnal and found in forest habitat. The plumage correlation resembles that of dried leaves and the bird roosts quietly in branches, making it difficult to see. Each has a favorite roost that it uses regularly unless disturbed. It has a distinctive call that is usually heard at dawn and dusk. They live in the dense undergrowth of tropical forests where they're gray, brown feathers make them very difficult to see. What makes them particularly weird is their oversized head. Look at how stupidly big it is compared to the rest of their body. They kind of look like one of those fungal pop figures. But the literal big head isn't just aesthetic. It gives these nocturnal birds an incredibly wide field of binocular vision. The short, stiff bristles around their eyes are yet another attractive and distinguishing feature. This frog mouth is rarely seen during the day, except at roost sites or when flushed. It regularly uses the same roof spot for months. When alarm at its perch, it slowly moves its head pointing its bill upward, and it can easily be mistaken for a jagged broken branch. It relies on this crypsis and will often sit still a long time before making an escape. It may open its mouth wide in a threat display. Like its congeners, it feeds on insects, catching them in flight or gleaning them from the ground or tree branches. It is sometimes mobbed at its day post by small song birds. It is vocal at dusk. The call of the female being a loud, screechy, squeal, which drops in volume and ends in a series of hiccups. Another call is a series of rapid square, 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 which is produced by both male and female. The breeding season in southern India is January to April and at Sri Lanka, February to March. The nest is a small pad made of moss and covered on the outside with lichens and bark. The bird incubates, a single white egg covering the nest and holding the tail, flush with the tree taking on the outline of a lichen-covered snag. The male often brews during the day, while both parents share the duty during the night. After the chick fletches, 
the male destroys the nest. The parents often use the same branch for multiple nestings. The juvenile may stay with the parents for a couple of months huddling between them at the roost. Thanks for watching.